What's up guys, I'm Jeff Montgomery and welcome to Tax Planning on the Whiteboard. If you like what you hear today, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna tackle the question that I've heard many times throughout my practice. And that question is, should I pay taxes on a Roth IRA conversion from my IRA account? Before we jump into that, quick disclaimer, this is general information and education only, not specific to anyone's circumstance. So please don't implement any strategies you see or hear today on this video without talking to your financial professional first. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go to the whiteboard. Should you pay taxes on a Roth IRA conversion from a pre-tax IRA? Couple assumptions here. Number one, we're going to assume we're just talking about taxes, not an additional 10% early distribution penalty if paid from an IRA prior to 59 and a half. So let's clarify. Technically, a conversion is considered a rollover, okay? Trustee to trustee. However, if you take money out of an IRA and you're under 59 and a half to pay the taxes, that could be subject to a 10% early distribution penalty. So the assumption here is you're over 59 and a half. And if you take money out of your IRA to pay the taxes, you will not incur that penalty. Okay, now conventional wisdom calls for paying tax on a Roth conversion from other sources outside of an IRA, such as savings, brokerage accounts, other liquid resources. That would move more dollars into the tax-free Roth IRA bucket for a qualified distribution in the future. Remember, a qualified distribution is one that meets all the rules for a tax-free distribution. Plus, we have the bonus feature of a Roth IRA where there are no required minimum distributions under current law. But what if you don't have other savings outside of a traditional IRA to pay these taxes? Does it ever make sense to pay taxes from the IRA itself? Well, in some cases, after crunching all the numbers, it may make sense. So let's take a look at a couple examples where that could be the case. Number one, funding for a future big purchase, especially after the Trump tax cuts expire in 2026. That is scheduled in 2026. So let's say a couple converted 25,000 a year for four years net after taxes. Let's further assume they paid 8,000 in taxes from the IRA itself on each conversion. So a total of 33,000 out of the IRA. Anticipate they need $100,000 in four years for a large purchase. And if left in the IRA alone, they would need to withdraw $140,000 after 2026. Well, now the tax cuts have expired and all the tax rates in all the brackets have increased. This tax savings could easily be ten dollars to $15,000 using this conversion strategy. Also, taking a large taxable distribution in that year, depending on their age, could push them over the Medicare thresholds to trigger IRMA and increasing their Part B and D premiums. So that could be a viable strategy. What if you have low individual tax rates, even temporarily your marginal tax rates are low? That could be a reason, a compelling reason, to pay taxes from the IRA itself. For example, a couple filing jointly in 2023 can remain in the 12% federal tax bracket all the way through income after deductions of $89,450. Assuming a temporary drop in other income such as retirement or business owner with an operating loss and in future years withdrawal from the IRA would be a higher tax rate than this temporary condition. It could make sense to pay taxes at that lower rate. How about bridging the gap for healthcare? Number three, some folks retire prior to Medicare age of 65 and they need to bridge the gap for healthcare expenses. Some of these costs can be exorbitant through the private healthcare marketplace. If a couple 
had a Roth conversion plan prior to retirement, even if they had to pay taxes from the IRA itself, it could be beneficial. How? Well, private health care might cost $2,000 or more per month prior to signing up for Medicare. If they had a substantial Roth account to draw from their first few years of those expenses, they may be able to go to the ACA marketplace under the ACA income threshold and qualify for a health care subsidy. This could drop their monthly outlay for health care to as little as $300 a month instead of $2,000. Remember, qualified Roth distributions do not count as income for ACA premium tax credits. It's not taxable income and does not count in the adjusted gross income figure, which triggers other tax code gotchas. At age 65, when the couple goes on Medicare, they could decide to keep drawing from the Roth IRA or leave it alone for future untaxed gains. Pretty cool strategy to consider. All right, number four, the potential widow's penalty threat. Assume a large difference in ages and poor health of the older spouse. Also assume large IRA accounts with potentially large required minimum distributions for the surviving spouse, but little to no non-IRA monies. While both spouses are alive, they file taxes as married filing jointly, where the brackets are much more generous than single brackets. If the conversion amount is calculated carefully so as not to trigger IRMA charges for Medicare premiums, it may make sense to do Roth conversions before the older spouse passes away. Just some food for thought. So I would say in general, it rarely makes sense to pay taxes from a pre-tax IRA. However, as you can see, in certain circumstances, it could. So thank you for joining us on this episode of Tax Planning on the Whiteboard. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.